I don't know if I should be narrating. Good idea. Ladies and gentlemen, how you doing? How you feeling? Today, I am bringing you a little bit of a different video. Um, it is a blog of some sorts, um, except that I didn't actually narrate. Not that good of a, of a blogger. I did a few years back um, when I was like traveling across Europe and stuff like that, but those days are long gone. I'm not, I'm not a very good public speaker, but um, I'm going to be narrating. Um, we recently took a trip to the National Video Game Museum in Frisco, Texas. Is it in the Frisco, Texas? I don't even know. National Video Game Museum. Let me let me search that real quick. Frisco, Texas. Yes, it was Frisco, Texas. This is from their webpage. This is their, their mission. Um, our mission is fairly straightforward and simple to preserve the history of video game industry by archiving not only the physical artifacts, but also the information and stories behind its creation. The goal of the National Video Game Museum is to document document firsthand as much information about the creation and evolution of the video game industry as possible and preserve as many physical artifacts as possible for generations to come. Lastly, we will present the information and as many of the physical artifacts as possible to the public in an entertaining and informative way. Video games are meant to be played and that is the underlying thought behind each and every exhibit in the museum. This means that we will do everything in our power to allow museum patreons the opportunity to actually play as many games as possible during their visit to the National Video Game Museum. So we decided to go there. We had a couple of friends out visiting here in Texas. Um, they came from Arizona. Um, really really um fitting for the for the theme of this video video games arizona i mean texas texas is just outside <laughs> but um so i'm gonna be narrating you know after the fact and i'll show you some clips here of what the actual the video game museum is like it's super fun i recommend it to anybody who's out here in the dfw area it's a super fun outing you know for your children um even if you're you know an adult like i am allegedly it's a good outing you know you learn a lot about the video game you know just history of video game as a whole of the industry the its history its roots all the like little facts here and there some obscure facts that i actually didn't know so it was it was a really informative visit but let's just jump into it man i've been talking like crazy now okay video is off now it's just me and you to get started, we actually went we went to this place called Nirvana in Frisco, which is all video game related stuff. It's a restaurant, it has a bunch of TVs, it has a bunch of consoles that you can play. I love their menu. Um, their menu was like super, super detailed and like it, it was branded towards like video game stuff, obviously, you know. You got like, what is this, your Java Mana? You got your your oldest school, your super smash drinks, your potions. It was such a, a cool little place. And like I, I usually these super like these these restaurants that are super branded towards a certain thing or just in general, like think of like Hot Rock Cafe. They they usually don't have the best of food, but I was surprised, man. The food here was exceptionally decent. Yeah, there's my girlfriend, my beautiful girlfriend. Those are my buddies from Arizona. Um so yeah, it was a nice little meal. And then obviously we head on to the National Video Game Museum, which is actually inside of the Frisco Discovery Center. It's not necessarily a whole building, uh, but it's still pretty big. It's still, the, the section of the museum is extremely big. You know, you're greeted by this, this huge, huge wall of all the consoles. It's more of like an art piece. It's really, really nice. It's super duper nice. You get all like, these are like custom, color consoles from all generations and all all companies um here we go little block section uh, block my beautiful section. girlfriend she actually blogged um our, our our visit there so you make sure to go follow her she has a amazing travel content um but due to covid obviously a lot of it's um catered to home stuff but look at this Look at this amazing wall and this little art piece of all the, probably the most iconic video game characters. I was amazed by just how many consoles there's actually been throughout the whole history of video games. Like when you think about it, video games have been around for like what? 40 years now or so. And, and it's just, it's amazing to me to see just all the different iterations. Like me, I come from a bubble. My bubble is obviously just, you know, Nintendo. But just seeing how it's, you know, 
Sega, how, how much influential Sega was, how influential obviously like Sony has been, like even even uh, even cell phone companies have been influential in the gaming industry. Um, they, they they like I said, this video game this video game museum it just not only deals with like the top um, the top video game companies. They also talked about like mobile gaming. Um, they have some some information of like phones that we used to you know you you know you youngins probably don't remember this but there were a few phones that were specifically catered to like playing and texting it's more specifically texting but playing video games on your phone which was like huge to us it was amazing it was huge to us that you were able to play games on your phone but yeah you know you you got some some starcraft 64 here they also had some some stuff from tabletop games you got your um obviously your doom tabletop apparently donkey kong country had a tabletop this was my favorite area the nintendo 64 collection this this had some classic games here um apparently twilight princess had a trailer on the nintendo ds something i didn't know which was amazing to to see um, i got super excited i thought like what twilight princess at nintendo ds release let me go get that real quick but no snowboard kids too man they had snowboard kids too if you never played snowboard kids games man they're one of the best video games out there so we want to drink milk but just seeing all the different variations of, of, of paraphernalia that Nintendo specifically put out is amazing to me. Like, I would I always thought that Nintendo was a very traditional company, a very conservative company, but like they really, really branched out into a bunch of stuff. I didn't know they had cereal. Did you know you had they had cereal? I didn't know they had cereal. Um, here we got the obviously the Panasonic Q system, such a classic hit system, man. I, I always wanted that as a kid but you know i could never get my hands on it um the national video game museum obviously like it, it's so stacked i i always expected you know these type of museums to be like super underwhelming um like you just don't expect them to like go through the lengths that you know this video game museum went through they did a really really good job at showcasing all the different elements from video games you know, we got it. Uh, and Hello Kitty Dreamcast. Shout out Sega, man. Dreamcast, one of the best consoles to ever exist. They also have these settings, like they look like movie sets of like, you know, the, the years before our time um, of what like a bedroom actually looked like. So you had like a bedroom from the 80s, a bedroom from the 70s. Super cool to look into. Um, here we see a bunch of little, oh, we got obviously the Super Mario Bros figurines from the movies. <laughs> We got the Final Fantasy VII figurines over here. We got obviously like this, the Pez from, you know, Nintendo has put out over the years. And this was super cool, man. Like this gives you a look into what gaming was way back before the internet. Like just seeing game rooms from, from yonder, you know, from the days way, way before our time. Just super cool. That's us. Shout out. I don't I don't approve the Reagan Bush 84 sticker, but okay. I, I guess I guess they gotta stick. They gotta stick to their guns and like really show you what <laughs> kids had to live through back in the day, you know what I'm saying? Um they also had a little arcade where you can come into and play, you know, obviously this costs money, but you know, they got a, a coin machine where you can just, you know, turn your sweet, sweet money into actual coins. Um, they have a bunch of different arcade cabinets out here. I, I was amazed at the selection. They got the classics, obviously. You know, they got Soul Calibur. They got Street Fighter. Um, they got Donkey Kong Country. They got Gauntlet. Just just a bunch of different uh, cool video game video game arcade cabinets. Obviously, COVID times. Shout out. We gotta keep. We gotta keep. You know, we gotta keep safe out here, man. That is one thing I will say, man. The video game museum, like you would expect it since it's video game and it's arcades people are touching stuff like especially in covid times like i, I would have felt more comfortable and, and if people were always like they were cleaning this constantly like there's people touching these these joysticks and these these arcade cabinets all the time i would expect someone to be on deck to always be cleaning these things like it's kind of it was kind of worrisome to see how little care people were taking about this i mean we obviously had our own um uh, disinfectant but still you know you can't you can't trust these you can't trust these people you know what i'm saying here's me playing dig duck i remember this game fondly this was one of the first arcade games i got into when i was a kid it, it's 
it's a classic man and then we, there's also a whole section dedicated to handheld gaming it was just super cool like this is a collector's dream man just seeing all the different kind of handheld devices has been out you know especially from nintendo nintendo's obviously had a had a stronghold on the handheld devices if anybody knows about handheld consoles it's nintendo so it's super awesome to see all the history behind it like going all the way back from you know the game and watch all the way up to you know what's currently obviously the switch but even up to the 3ds like they got all kinds of super rare and super cool consoles um obviously shout out to the sony psp one of the good one of the best uh handheld devices out there i never had one but i had a buddy who would always let me play uh dynasty warriors on it god i hated that game because i was bad at it not not there wasn't anything wrong with it but you know what i'm saying and where we get more like the traditional stuff like you know back in like the 80s and like i'd imagine like the late 70s of what you know the rise of home computers when home computers were starting to become a thing and like gaming started actually invading so to speak the home computer with you know stuff such as doom and, and and those types of games also a whole controller wall i want to do this i want to build something like this whenever i buy a house i want to have a whole wall dedicated to my collection of controllers i don't have as big of a collection but i like to think i do have enough controllers to like excuse like to to actually excuse building a whole wall dedicated to controllers you know some more classic classic uh paraphernalia from from nintendo and playstation um and just little, little knickknacks here and there man I, I will say i was this is one of the best video game museums out there like I'm, I'm i don't know how many there actually are but just just great to see all all history especially so close to home you wouldn't expect it to be in texas of all places like i would expect a video game museum to be like and these are by the way these are prototype consoles these are development consoles they look so cool but i would expect like something like this to be from like to to be out in in tokyo to be out in like i would even excuse la it's a place like that but like like here like i wouldn't expect a, a game a video game museum in texas to be this stacked with a bunch of different stuff like it was amazing it was it was great to see the history of it shout out to half-life <laughs> there's a little half-life game down there um you also get a, a good look into like prototype games um into like super rate games like cheetah men 2 this is where i found out about cheetah men 2 such a notorious game for just being such an ass game here, here was me thinking that fallout 76 was fallout 76 was one of the worst games ever but apparently cheetah men 2 is, is worse than that but um, they do they do their research and it's just super informative to find out stuff like that um, Shout out shout out cheetah man too. They should revive this game. They should really do something with it But yeah, man um, That's as much as I can tell you about the video game museum. You should definitely check it out if you're ever in Texas out in DFW um, It's in Frisco. So it's north of Dallas um, why did I say Dallas that way? But it's a very fun place, you know, to spend the day at with your friends, have have some have some fun, play some arcade games, learn about video game history museum. And if you're kids, if you're a parent, I can tell you they're gonna love this place. It's super cool, super 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 cool. I cannot recommend it enough. But now that I ramble on for like what 12 minutes, I just thought I wanted to make you know I should make a, a little video blog about it you know something different to the channel something that, that's entirely not scripted that was just off all off, off the top of the dome as they say but i hope you enjoy this let me know if uh if there's any other video game museums out there um i'm obviously gonna do my research because it's something that really really captivated me and, and and history is something that i've always really loved so i want to start making out trips you know once the COVID situation dies down i really want to go out and, and do some trips and like learn more about video games and its history so you let me know have you ever been to this specific museum or have you been to other museums out there in, in the world i want i want to know your stories um also if you're a collector give me some tips on how to get started because i really want to get started on this uh 
controller wall hopefully sometime soon but ladies and gentlemen i've been true fernie if you like this video please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe links to my socials are down below please make sure to follow me on twitch where i recently become an affiliate so any and all support down there is always greatly appreciated folks please take care of each other but most importantly take care of yourself peace